Hi and uh, welcome back to fleetmusic.blogspot. This is video two in a series where I'm looking at drum uh, synthesis. Uh, yeah, before I do the next few examples, I'm going to look at introducing some effects into our drum rack. So first off, I'm going to uh, just bring a compressor onto the end of the whole chain. Uh, settings are as so. Uh, Equally, you know, use one of these presets here and just uh, adjust the threshold accordingly. Um, but the idea is just to have a consistent uh, sound across all the sounds that we're going to create. I'm now going to um, draw, uh, drag in a few uh, return inserts um, or insert effects into the return channels. Um, so I'm going to do a bit of a New York compression or uh, parallel compression. Um, so first off, um, actually there's a very good uh, tutorial um, on this uh, where um, I think it's on Mr. Bill's channel. I'll post up the link uh, on this uh, later. But um, basically first off, you, you're going to want to uh, scoop out all the mid-range um, quite crudely like so, uh, and then you're going to want a really, really harsh, complete destruction type <laughs> compressor. So let's go for a brute compression, um, maybe even bring down the, um, maybe even bring down the threshold even more. Actually, let's, let's just start afresh. So let's bring our own compressor in. We'll keep, um, we'll keep yeah, on peak, we'll make the attack the absolute minimum. Uh, bring up the release to like 170 ish. Um, ratio 4, no knee, and be really, really harsh on threshold. Um, the idea here is that it, we're using the compressor not as a kind of dynamic uh, tool, but as, as a kind of effect in its own right. So we're kind of using it as a kind of sound sculpting tool, um, really. So uh, so if we actually go over to here and we go back to the blacked out send um, button, this gives us the opportunity to send uh, some of the signal to, to, that, to our New York style compression channel. So you can see all that game reduction we're getting, see how harsh it is. So let's just, um, that's, that's the actual, um, I have to solo the actual channel itself. So this is the effect of uh, the EQ8. So all the scooping of the mid-range. Um, and that's the actual effect of the very compressed signal. Um, and this is both combined, and this is without. So you can hear you can kind of get a much snappier sound. Um, again, you know, obviously adjust the suit, and this, you know, as we develop more and more sounds, we're gonna uh, in in our drum rack, some sounds will be appropriate to to send um, through uh, this New York style compression, and some it won't be, but. Um, uh, we'll deal with that when we get there. Um, the next um, thing we're going to do, we're going to just bring, go over to Live's Frequency Shifter and bring in the Ring um, Modulator um, setting preset. Uh, whack that up to 100. And uh, this is quite good with. Um, not all the sounds by any means, and uh, you might in certain, at certain junctures want to tune it accordingly. Um, we're not going to in this instance. And what I find is quite useful in uh, bringing out, um, well, bringing out kind of metallic, kind of atonal qualities and sounds that already have noise in them. Um, you wouldn't use it on these sounds, which are very kind of uh, simple in, in the kind of harmonic content, uh, or that don't have noise, should I say. Um, so let's just hear what that sounds like. Maybe try the other snare. Yeah, it's pretty far out and it's probably not the right sort of sound to use it on, but there will be others. Uh, the third, and I think for the moment the last um, 
device we're going to drop into our effects is going to be a little bit of simple reverb. Um, I did, why well, don't I looked at a tutorial by uh, some tutor at the Dubspot school, and he was sort of going through Live's reverb, and he um, came up with some, you know, he came up with a setting or preset that was roughly, uh, well, was it similar to a plate reverb? I mean, strictly speaking, obviously it's not a plate reverb, but um, it was kind of nice. It's basically, you know, for adding a um, a nice kind of tail on any given sound. Uh, and this, what we have here is a slight um, variation on that. Um, so. I'd recommend actually going to that tutorial, and again, I'll uh, post up a link to that because it's quite useful. Um, so you can see the settings we have here. We've got no processing, uh, and as always with any um, insert effect, uh, the kind of common practice is to bring the driver up to a hundred. So um, you can then vary the the severity or the intensity of effect with the amount of signal we actually send to it. Um, so the idea is it's a very short pre-delay, very short decay, um, and a, a very dense, um, or a fairly dense kind of reverb that's just going to kind of add a tail to um, the sounds that we're creating. So. Like so. so. It just brings out the tail of the sound a bit and just sort of freshes things out. Right, let's uh, get rid of that and go back and let's create our, I'm going to try within the uh, duration of this video, uh, try and create the next two um, snare sounds. And uh, the first one is going to be a, a nice simple affair. Let's actually close these guys down. Um, and we're going to go up to our instruments and as always drag in operator. We're going to call this snare 3, uh, rather unoriginally, and uh, let's put that in there. Um, so there's our basic tone. We're going to actually, in this instance, uh, use fixed tunings as opposed to uh, the method we've been employing uh, up to this point. Having uh, looked at um, some examples I found on the internet, courtesy of um, courtesy of Trash Audio. Uh, I found some nice um, 808 samples. Uh, and again, if you can't see this link, I will post up this link so you can download the sample pack. And I've dropped them into some instances of um, Ableton's simpler device and. Uh, I've just used them as kind of as references, um, just to kind of work out what are the prominent pitches within any given sound. So in this instance, uh, F2, which is which has a frequency of 176 hertz, is pretty very prominent. Um, so that's the actual pitch of that sound. Um, this other snare sounds, other kind of classic 808 snare sounds. Again, we've got F2 and the neck and F3 very prominent. So I'd recommend, you know, just using similar processes to that just to deconstruct sounds. And at least, you know, it's not a case of emulating uh, or exactly copying um, the sound, but it's more a case of knowing or using um, them as a reference point, as a kind of jumping off point. So at least you know the rough tuning so you don't end up going up loads of blind alleys. So, yeah, we're going to go to fixed tuning and type in 174, which is our. F2, we're going to bring the stain right down, bring the K to that 174, uh, keep it at 0 dB. Second, I'll say to B, we're going to have, uh, I think we're going to have fixed tuning obviously again, and we're going to play F1, which is around 86 hertz, and we're going to bring up the level to taste. Obviously, we've got lots of low frequency content there, and uh, the next step. Uh, once we've copied the envelope over from oscillator A, let's maybe bring up, uh, is to actually employ a bit of subtractive synthesis, and we're going to use a high pass 12 dB filter and 
bring the frequency down to about 180. So at the moment we've got kind of a tom sort of sound. But this is going to be the form of the body of our sound as uh, as we've done in the previous examples and we're going to add the noise with the vocoder later. Uh, let's, let's, let's give it a bit more um, kind of sound sculpting and uh, introduce a pitch envelope. I'm going to bring the decay nice and short to about 60 and um, bring the peak up to 44-ish, I don't know, 48. And bring the sustain down to minus 12, just give it a bit of thud. Um, you might want to, you know, it gets quite woody uh, the more you cut off. Um, okay, uh, the clock's ticking, so <laughs> I'm going to drag it in our vocoder. And again, as in the previous video, we're going to uh, use the vocoder's noise generator to uh, add in the kind of noise component of our bit of sound. Play around with that as you see fit. Um, you know, experiment bringing down these various, the various levels of the particular bands and um, affecting uh, or changing or using this XY uh, slider to change the quality of the noise. Uh, you want the attack to be instantaneous. Um, You'll get some nice effects for depth. So we've got quite a nice snappy, um, snappy snare. So there you go. Um, that's our third snare. Uh, in the next video, we're going to be looking at one last snare, and then we're going to move on to. Um, what are we going to move on to? We're going to move on to some hi hats and uh, yeah, some hi hats. And so, yeah, I'll see you in video three.